today I want to start with a review. Today I want to start with a review of disjoint cycle decomposition inside of SN. And the easiest thing to do for a review is to remind you that if we take a permutation, say inside of S6, and let's send 1 to 3, and 2 to 4, and 3 to 5, and 4 goes back to 2, and 5 will go to 6, and 6 will go to 1, that we find the disjoint cycle decomposition of this matrix basically by tracing. We start with 1, and we ask, where does 1 go? And we find out that 1 goes to 3. So we go back and say 1 goes to 3. Now, the next part of this is to then say, OK, well, where does 3 go? 3 goes to 5. And so as a consequence, we write down 3 goes to 5. And now at this point, we're looking for 5, and 5 goes to 6, so we wind up writing 5 goes to 6. And then we, of course, ask, where does 6 go? And 6 goes back to 1. Now, it's important to understand that we've already got a 1 inside of our cycle, so we basically say that 6 goes back to 1 by putting a parenthesis at the end of the cycle. And now we quickly look and we see one, we don't have a two. So we look and say, well, where does two go? Well, two goes to four. And then, of course, where does four go? Four goes back to two. And so four goes back to two, and that means we can just put a parenthesis. And now we, if we actually do our counting, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They're all accounted for. This particular permutation does not have any 1 cycles in it. And so we're basically done. It's also important to understand that if we are given a cycle that is written as permutations uh, in decomposite, this as a product of dis if we're given a permutation that is written as a product of disjoint cycles, and let's make one that's kind of complicated here. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight. OK, so there's our permutation. This one has three uh, cycles in it. They are disjoint. and. We know that the biggest thing that's moved by beta is this particular 8. So we're going to assume that this particular permutation is an element of S8. Now, if it's an element of S8, that says that beta has a two-row notation that looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we again find the second row by just doing tracing. So 1 goes to 7, and that means that we say 1 goes to 7. And now what we look at is 7 goes to 8. And what happened? 7 goes to 8. So we look at 7 goes to 8. And then we have... 8 goes back to 1, and so we have 8 goes to 1. And that completes the first cycle. So then we move on to the second cycle. And in the second cycle, we see that 2 goes to 4, so we write 2 goes to 4. And then we notice that 4 goes to 2, so we write 4 goes to 2. And at that point, we're now ready to move on to the next cycle. And in the next cycle, we see that 3 goes to 5 and 5 goes to 3. So 3 goes to 5 and 5 goes to 3. Now at this particular point, we notice that this guy doesn't yet have anybody below him. And what that means is that he's fixed by this permutation. So in two-row notation, 
we wind up having that six goes to six. Now there are a couple of other things that are important to remember about uh, disjoint cycle decomposition. And the first one is the big major theorem that we looked at just before spring break. And that's that every permutation inside of Sn has a unique disjoint cycle decomposition. And the disjoint, uh, the, the, the unique part of this disjoint cycle decomposition means that this is up to order of appearance of the cycles that's needs some correcting so let's get back to writing cycle correctly and the second thing about uniqueness is that uh, we don't care about run cycles. So it's unique up to the inclusion or exclusion of one cycles. So to come back to this particular permutation, uh, we could have written beta, we could have squished in a 6 goes to 6, and that would not have changed the uh, actual uh, way of thinking about beta's disjoint cycle decomposition. So one thing that is important to realize is that we also learned how to multiply permutations together in disjoint cycle decomposition form. So if we're given two dis if we're given the disjoint cycle uh, compositions for two permutations, so we'll make alpha that one, and beta is going to be one goes to seven goes to three and uh, two will go to five. And these are both going to be inside of S, we're going to make it inside of S7. So it's important to realize that uh, given this sort of thing, since uh, six and seven don't appear in alpha, alpha fixes six and seven, and uh, since 4 does not appear in beta, beta fixes the element 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, and it all, uh, beta also fixes 6. So neither one of these guys moves 6 around. Um, now, when we look at this particular notation, it means first do alpha and then do beta. And if we look at this notation, it means first do beta and then do alpha. And in order to actually do the computation, the first thing that we do is we write the two permutations down in the order that they appear in the product. So beta is on the left in this particular product, so we write down beta first. And then we write down alpha. In this particular one, alpha is on the left, so we write down alpha first. And then we write down beta. 1 goes to 7 goes to 3, and then 2 goes to 5. Now, in both of these, the way that we actually find the actual answer is we're going to start on the back side, and we just trace through the elements. So let's get rid of that little stray mark. And uh, we usually typically start off with 1. And I'm going to do the top one first. And again, it's a matter of tracing through what happens. One, oops, starting on the wrong side there. That'll go, you'll fade. So let's see, we're going to start on the, wrong, the, the, the right side. 
When we start back here, the first one we see is this one, and one goes to two. So as a consequence, we write one goes, oh, we're not done yet. And now we have to uh, keep going. We start looking at two. Ah, here's a two. Two goes to five. And there are no fives over here. So what that tells me is that one goes to five. Now we start the same process over, but this time we're focusing in on five. Five goes to three. Three is fixed. Three is fixed. Three goes to one. So five goes to one. And what that tells me is I want to close that cycle. Well, the next thing that, uh, the first thing that hasn't been moved in this first cycle here is a two. So we look at two and we say, well, what happens to two? Well, we go through, ah, there's a two. Two goes to one. Now we're looking for ones. And we can, ah, one goes to seven. So what that tells me is that two goes to seven. So now what we do is we face our, focus our attention on sevens. There are no sevens. There are no sevens. Ah, seven goes to three. So we now know that seven goes to three. And at this point, we start focusing in on threes. Three goes to four, and there are no fours through here, so that tells me that three goes to four, and four basically, and it just lands there. Now we focus in on fours. Four goes to five, and the first, the next five that we see is here. Five goes to two, and there are no twos, so it turns out that four goes to two. But we already have a two here, so that tells me we don't need to write the two there. What we're going to do is we simply close the cycle. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five. Six doesn't appear anywhere. If we want to make sure that we've accounted for him, we can do that. But remember, one cycles don't count, so this permutation can also be written this way. And I think we've got counted for everybody else now. Uh, let's do this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got actually counted for everybody. We do exactly the same thing on the other one. I'm not going to put quite as much attention into it. Uh, so you can kind of, first of all, I would encourage you to stop the video and do this calculation for yourself and then Watch and see if you get the same answer. So, one. And I want to be using the magic pin because I don't want this stuff to get more and more cluttered. One goes to seven and seven stays thick, so one goes to seven. Seven goes to three and three goes to four, so seven is going to go to four. And now four, there are no fours. Four goes to five and five stays fixed. So four goes to five. Now five goes to two and two goes to one. So five goes to one, but that's just a repeat. So we end the cycle and let me do the erasing of that guy and putting that five back in. And now we look at two. And two goes to five, five goes to three, so two goes to three. Three goes to one, and one goes to two. So that ends the cycle. And now we have one, two, three, four, five. We have a six cycle if we want to do it. We can write that, but this is completely optional. So it's important to realize that this is optional. We don't have to write that cycle if we want to. So the other obvious thing that we want to realize is that first do beta, then do alpha, is usually not the same as first do alpha, then do beta. And that is long enough, so let us now try to stop the recording.